On today's episode, we have the Locked On Longhorns version of the Versus. We're starting off with Hudson Carr versus Quinn Ewers. Then we're going into Arch Manning versus Malik Murphy. And finally, we're going to end it with Sark versus everybody. You are Locked On Longhorns, your daily podcast on the Texas Longhorns. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked on Longhorns, the show. Jonathan Davis, your host. Very excited for today's show. I got my brother with me, Stephen N. Gotti. Fanatic perspective on YouTube. 11,000 subscribers. I got a superstar in the building with me. And if you're on UT Twitter, you already know who Stephen is. One of the most recognizable voices in Longhorn Nation. It's been a crazy week for Texas football, huh? Amen, John. Thank you for having me on. Our phones have been just blowing up like crazy brother but all good news and good news for the program good pr for the program unbelievable we can't wait to to dive in bro a lot of good stuff but you know we've we've brought in a quarterback and we've brought in another quarterback in, in quinn ewers we brought in arch manning this week and that's created a lot of talk around the program over who's going to start at quarterback for the next few years but let's talk about the two quarterbacks it seems that are in the running to start this year in the 2022 season for the Texas Longhorns, coming off a disappointing five and seven year in Sark's first season. So we're gonna do a versus. And Steven, what I want you to do for Longhorn Nation is I want you to make two cases for me. I want you to make the case for Quinn Ewers to be the starting quarterback first. And then I want you to make the case for Hudson Card to be the starting quarterback second. The floor is yours. Got it. Hopefully we are uh, a little bit more entertaining i don't know if we'll match the entertaining level of a marion versus mario but uh this is gonna be this is gonna be fun so as for quinn yours uh the case is very simple he's one of the most talented quarterback prospects out of you know out of the state of texas out of the country in the last 20 plus years he comes from a loaded quarterback room from ohio state He didn't play high school football last year, but Caleb Williams didn't play high school football the year before. He was fine. Quinn Ewers coming from Ohio State, you know, learning from Ryan Day, C.J. Stroud, all those guys over there, now coming over to Texas, capitalizing with his arm talent, this group of guys that has to be maximized in Steve Sarkeesian's offense. We're looking for a dynamite talent at quarterback that can get the football to put people in dynamic ways, downfield, arm angles, RPO, mobility, and also leadership and intangibles of actually guys following somebody and growing with somebody. Quinn Ewers is your long-term solution right now. As a, and, and we say long-term, we're talking about more than one season. That's the, that's the reality for the state of Texas. Might as well get it going now and let this team ride behind Quinn. We saw too much big time NFL talent, even in the spring game to go back. That's my case for Quinn right out the gate. I have to agree with that. You know, I've said plenty of times on this podcast, I think that although Hudson Card is a really good quarterback, I think that Quinn Ewers is special. When you look at the top programs in the nation, the Ohio State, CJ Stroud is special. Bryce Young, he's special. You look at a Trevor Lawrence, he's special. Even a Caleb Williams, he's special. I think to compete at the level that Texas wants to be on, you need special under center, not just good. And that's why I think that's my case for Quinn Ewers, at least, to be the starter over Hudson Card. And like you said, when you talk about that crazy talent and the way that he jumps off the screen, you can't go backwards unless you can. So let's so, get a case for so, Hudson Card. So, so Hudson Card is not a slouch when it comes to an arm talent perspective and all those things. Just last year when we were in this whole quarterback conundrum between Hudson Card and Casey Thompson, the argument for Hudson Card was pro skills throwing the football. Same type of, you know, case that we're now against him, you know, so to speak, with Quinn Ewers. But Hudson Card is not a slouch, or a slouch so to speak. Also, the experience within this offense working with Steve Sarkeesian uh, and and the improvement, quite frankly, that I personally saw during the spring game. Whether Hudson Card ends up the starter or not, I'm encouraged by the fact that he looked 
a lot more decisive in the pocket, you know, understanding that there's a clock and understanding that I have to get the football out and protect my team. And it's not just not throwing interceptions, but also taking some risks downfield. He did was a little bit more aggressive. He does seem to improve, have some improvement with his deep ball, which was a big issue last year. So from a standpoint of experience and protecting the football, Quinn Ewers might have issues in terms of reading defenses over the middle as a young freshman or issues in terms of just game speed and how things are coming at him. We never know. Hudson Carr, we've at least seen in there, good, bad, and ugly. And I think right now a lot of Texas fans, because of what was around Hudson and some of the things he went through, are actually discounting Hudson Carr at this point because we're excited to see the new thing. But Steve Sarkeesian development, what he's done with Mac Jones in the past, what he's done with Jake Locker and so many Keith Price, so many guys over the years that have gotten exponentially better under Steve's coaching and tutelage. Why wouldn't that be the case for Hudson Card? So that would be my case there in terms of why he would be the starter. And, and if you're if you're saying that you're running a program of meritocracy and the best man's going to play regardless of NIL or anything else, then why not Hudson Card? Mm, good points there. And I think one thing that you didn't mention, maybe the biggest thing that separates him from Quinn Ewers is his mobility. I mean, we saw in the spring game at times last year, he can flat out run and he's got speed. He is a true dual threat quarterback. I think I think that Quinn Ewers has movement skills in the pocket and he's athletic enough to make a play. But you're talking about somebody in Hudson Carr who can really run the rock. So my case, the, the thing with that, too, um, and he does, Hudson does have wheels. It has to be decisive with it, though. And so I think if we go back to the Quinn thing, I like the way Quinn moves in and out of the pocket. It's not always about speed and, and things of that sort. It's also about feel and instincts. You know, it, it, some guys feel that backside rusher. Some guys don't. And so that's something that we're wanting to see from Hudson is that decisiveness in the pocket. If you're going to run, run. <laughs> if you're going to yeah. scramble to throw, you know, make some moves and, and get out of there. But um, the, he's had a, trouble with the clock. As, and so I think from a standpoint of Steve Sarkeesian, not using a whole lot of quarterback run in his scheme, but with, maybe with the RPO stuff and, you know, Brennan Marion coming in and adding some of the go-go elements, Hudson, that may be more favorable to Hudson card. Who knows? So I've seen a lot of discourse between fans about the year that Hudson Card last year had last year. Some people feel as though there are issues like you mentioned with the clock and, you know, him being, you know, not decisive and things. Some people feel like those are just Hudson Card issues and they will not be fixed. A lot of people feel like Hudson Card may be getting a bad rap because of the way that the offensive line played last year. Which side of that conversation are you more on? It's always a combo of both. And I think because he was, it's the Arkansas game. That's, 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 let's, let's, let's get right to the point because coming out of, you know, Louisiana, you know, Lafayette game, people were excited about Hudson after that first week and the Arkansas game comes and it's, it was a horrendous performance, right? He's, he looks scared during headlights. You're hearing all these, these things in, in the comments. And so Casey Thompson, at least you, you got, you know, you got, we got a lot of good Casey, and, and he looked fearless at times, sometimes to, to a fault. But at least from a quarterback standpoint, like that's what people want to see in terms of being aggressive and attacking a defense. And there's just always been this reluctance with Hudson that we've seen. But I do think in, in some elements he is getting a bad rap because even the West Virginia game where he gets injured, um, you know, he started to show some signs and some some real areas of like, OK, he's improving. And it was also his freshman, you know, redshirt freshman year, but redshirt freshman year where you're in a new offense and a lot being thrown at you and he's adjusting. And so we don't have that same grace that we used to have maybe 20, 30 years ago with quarterbacks. Now, when we see the Bryce Youngs and some of the guys you mentioned earlier that are special, that's what you're getting comp to, especially at a school like Texas. All right. So really quick, you've made your case for both excellent cases for both. I think either one would be good with all of the weapons that we have under Sark's offense. Who starts in the fall? Quinn Ewers. Quinn Ewers is your starting quarterback. I think with Steve Sarkeesian also making the point about them wanting to get it out of the way earlier this year, 
I think that was something last year where if you could go back and, and kind of tweak some things, maybe he does that different. But when we saw that bomb, that that post route that he hit to Isaiah Nayor, I know it's just one throw, but that's where you really unlock your offense mm-hmm. and maximize even B. John Robinson and truly making defenses pay over top. Steve wants to take shots downfield. We're a running football team. Don't get it twisted. We have the best running back in the country. We're a running football team. But in order to truly capitalize, capitalize Xavier Worthy, Isaiah Nayor, Ajayi Hall, all these, these guys that are downfield guys, we have to be good off play action, throwing, taking big time shots downfield. And who better than somebody that has a Patrick Mahomish type ability back there? You don't let that guy sit on the bench. You let that guy go figure it out. I don't care if he's going to throw some picks or whatever. I'm I'm down right now. To, I'm I want to get started on the Quinn Ewers journey now. Now I'm not waiting. No disrespect to Hudson Card. You're one play away. We need you to be ready. I'm glad you're developing, but this needs to be Quinn Ewers football team moving forward. Steven said it so eloquently. I'm just gonna echo it and say it's Quinn Ewers time, baby. And like like you said, no disrespect to Hudson Card, uh, but Quinn Ewers is special and special is what is going to lead Texas back to the promised land. Next on the series of verses, we're talking Arch Manning and Malik Murphy. Cannot wait for this one. But first, a word from Bet Online because it is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all of the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's NHL playoffs and Major League Baseball. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sport wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. And BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online where the game starts. All right, Steven, I'm amped up for this one. I knew where you were going to go with the Quinn Ewers Hudson card one because I knew where most people are go with that. But this one, Arch Manning, the prodigy, nephew of Peyton and Eli Manning, grandson of Archie Manning, committed to the University of Texas on June 23rd. 2022 the number one overall prospect in the 2023 class one of three quarterbacks ever to receive a thousand perfect rating from 24 7 sports composite the first two i've said it before vince young quinn ewers looky there then you have malik murphy the four-star true freshman quarterback coming in this year who's really talented and is a fan favorite at the 40 acres and a lot of people feel like people are writing him off people feel like the future of texas football is already set in stone and it's Quinn Ewers and Arch Manning will be your next two starting quarterbacks at the University of Texas. And we're just forgetting about Malik Murphy and writing him off. So are we forgetting and writing off Malik Murphy? Or is this just simply a situation where you can only play one quarterback at a time and that one quarterback is going to be Arch Manning, Stephen? The cards are stacked against Malik. If you're looking at Malik being any type of long-term starting quarterback post Quinn Ewers, if the path of secession should should be the way it is between Quinn to Arch. The cards are stacked against Malik, but the cards have sta- been stacked against Malik before in high school when everybody started saying he was trash after playing that, six, that weird six-game season post-COVID and his rating dipped and tanked. You know what Malik did? Malik went and worked. He went on the camp circuit and killed it he worked and you know led his team to a state championship when no one thought they would with that group of talent so the cards have been stacked against malik before my message to malik is stay the course right and 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 see how things play out because very rarely do things just fall neatly in line like that in college football that hardly ever happens but in the case of the plan if you're steve sarkeesian and I can stack Quinn Ewers and then, you know, two classes later, get another all-time recruit in, in Arch Manning, who is a Manning. And, you know, John Garcia, who was on your show the other day, John brought up the excellent point about Arch having one of the highest floors for any quarterback coming out of high school because of the cerebral element and the intermediate skills that a lot of quarterbacks didn't even don't have even at the beginning of their NFL careers. Arch has that now. That's a unique situation to be in. So in order to beat that guy, you're going to have to play at an absurd level. But if you're Malik, utilize these next two years that you'll have to develop to give Archer run for his money when when it's up to that. But I, I don't think that you should 
dismiss Malik in favor of Arch. I think you should say we have an unreal quarterback room full of amazing quarterback, you know, NFL quarterback arm talent. And if we play the numbers game, we're going to have an NFL player back there. Now, we want it to be, you know, from a Manning perspective and the recruiting and all the other things that come with Arch and the and Steve's track record as a developer, you want to be on the favorable side of the Mannings, no doubt about that. And that's why this week has been so special. But if you're Malik, stay the course. Chips have been against you before. Chips are against you now. Rise to the occasion. For sure. So... Let's get into the nitty gritty on this podcast. You know, we love Malik. We love Arts. We love Quinn. We love Hudson. But as we said, only one quarterback can play at a time. Mm -hmm. I feel as though you can call it politics, whatever. You know, we talked about a meritocracy earlier. And I think Arch is definitely good enough to come in and beat Malik Murphy in a, in a quarterback competition. But there's no way that Sark cannot start Arch Manning and risk him transferring to another university, right? I mean, let's just let's just get into it. There's no way. You can call it what you want. That Sark can put Arch Manning on the bench if it's for anybody other than Quinn Ewers in Arch Manning's true freshman year, right? If we haven't seen a whole lot of Malik, if Malik's, let's say it gets to that point where Quinn Ewers has played two years and Malik really hasn't played a whole lot or has come in and just really, you know, not too many, like similar to Casey Thompson under Sam Ellinger, where we didn't see a whole lot until the Alamo Bowl. And Arch is here. Arch is there's there's really it's going to be really really difficult not to play Arch Manning, especially after Arch has then sat a year and redshirted as well, and should be up to speed. And what Arch is would be his second year in the program, right? So I agree, it would be difficult um, for a lot of reasons politically. You're absolutely right. I think if you're Malik Murphy, if I'm looking at how can I get on the field. You're kind of looking at what happened, and I hate to say this, but this is this is how it would probably play out in his favor, is what happened with Georgia when they had Jacob Eason and then Fromm and then Justin Fields, and somebody got hurt, and then Fromm killed it when he, when he got the opportunity to play. I think it's going to have to be it for Malik to really do something. It would have to be he would be playing or have already played before Arch Cup. But if, if we haven't seen either of them play in, in any real snaps and it's Arch and Malik, it's going to be very, very, very difficult not to go with Arch. Same reasoning we're, we're, why we're going with Quinn versus Hudson. That makes sense for sure. And one last thing on Arch Manning, because it makes perfect sense if Quinn Ewer starts the next two years and Arch Manning starts the two years after that. Mm -hmm. So his red shirt sophomore, I mean, his red shirt freshman and red shirt sophomore year, or if they don't red shirt him, his true sophomore and true junior year, right? Sets up perfectly for Texas if that were to be the case. But as you said earlier, it rarely happens that way in college football. Do you think there's any chance that Texas fans are being overly optimistic that Arch is willing to come in and sit a year? Do you think there's any chance that Arch comes in and says, yeah, Quinn Ewers is cool. He's got a mullet and he's all right. He's got an Aston Martin, but I'm Arch Manning. I can start right away as a true freshman. Put me on the field right away as a true freshman. Do you think there's any chance that happens? We haven't seen anything from, from Arch or their family to, to, to insinuate that. I, I actually see them really as understanding the long game and understanding where Quinn is. I think the only way that could be something is if Quinn is a disappointment or is not, or is just so careless with the football and he's so turnover prone where it's like, Hey, even as a freshman coming in, I feel like I can be a better decision maker for this team. And maybe Quinn is too reckless, but if Quinn yours is playing the way we mean you think he'll play, then I think this is more of a plan of secession between those two. Let's hope <laughs> for sure. One more That's, word from our sponsor. Right. <laughs> yeah. Let's hope. Because like I said, I, I know as Texas fans, we just wanted to work out that smoothly, you know. But like I said, I mean, Arch was graded just as high as, as Quinn Ewers. He has the, the Manning last name. He could easily, you know, come in and we could be all wrong about him. You know, he could come in and say I'm better than him. I, I think I think the same thing that you think. I think he's willing to come in as a true freshman or a redshirt freshman and, and sit behind Quinn, learn for a year and still have – as a college quarterback this year, you really only need one year of starting. So two is perfect, you, do. you know? And so I, he would definitely get his chance to start two years. I just don't, you know, this is one of the best and most 
quiet and strategic recruitments we've ever seen. And none of us know as much about Arch Manning as we think we do. So I just don't want Texas fans to get super hype and say, oh, he's just going to come in and sit. Don't worry about it. He's going to let Quinn start and then he's going to take over. And then he comes in with a different bravado. And then we're all looking like, man, we got a situation on our hands. But like you said, John, hopefully one, I want to make one point before you, before we pay. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead. And, go get, ahead. and get over. Um, look, do you think Georgia fans thought they were going to win a national championship with Stetson Bennett the fourth over JT no. Daniels? If you had told them before the season that your five-star quarterback, JT Daniels, who tore it up at the end of last season. So they're thinking coming into this season, JT just tore it up. He's NFL talent. And then he goes down game one and they're going to go and win with Stetson Bennett. Did you like that's college football for you? So we have to yeah. keep that in mind when, when dissecting these quarterback situations. Anything can happen. You're absolutely right, Steven. With the ever increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer? Choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry, you have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. Rock Auto prices are reliably low for every customer go explore their easy to use website today to find the solution to your auto part needs go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck right locked on in there how did you hear about us box so they know we sent you amazing selection reliably low prices all the parts your car will ever need rockauto.com steven has killed it this whole episode and i got one more versus for him how about steve sarkeesian versus everybody yes steve sarkeesian versus every power five coach when you look at what Sark has been able to do coming off a five and seven season. It's hard to argue that he has not had one of the best off seasons of any power five coach in college football. If you need a recap, how about bringing in the number one quarterback, one of the best transfers in the 2021 class, Quinn Ewers. That's not enough. You bring in a Jai Hall. You bring in Isaiah Nayor. You bring in Ryan Watts. You bring in Diamante Tucker Dorsey. You bring in Tariq Milton in the transfer class, one of the top transfer classes. You bring in the number five recruiting class with arguably one of the top offensive line classes in history with six blue chip offensive linemen in one class coming to one school. And the one thing that may have trumped all of that, on June 23rd, 2022, Steve Sarkeesian brought arguably the most hyped recruit in any sport ever to the 40 acres steven make the case that steve sarkeesian has had the best off season of any power five coach i'm bouncing up in my seat i'm hype it's like a hype take right now for steve sarkeesian had the best off season of any coach in the power five i believe he has and the reason being is everything you stated in terms of really understanding when you're able to have that much success in recruiting that means people believe what you're selling People believe your brand. People believe where your program is going. Before we started this conversation off camera, John, we were talking about, you know, belief in, in terms of understanding and, and being authentic about how we truly, truly feel about where this program is and the Mannings having a belief in this. They wouldn't commit to something if they didn't believe that the product would, would be where it is. The, the Quinn Ewers and his people wouldn't commit to something if they didn't believe that the product, like these are creme de la creme type guys. These aren't, you know, the, the average big time recruits, right? So with that belief, that echoes into other coaches and, and players. You picked up a Brendan Marion this off season. In my opinion, that goes on Steve Sarkeesian's resume. You picked up a, a Tashar Choice this off season. In my opinion, that goes on, on on Steve Sarkeesian's resume. So the ability not just to attract, you know, talent from the portal, talent in recruiting, but also coaching talent and the upgrade of, of the staff. Um, I mean, Brendan Marion's one of the most talented young football minds in America right now, and I think he's. John, what would you say? Another three, four years before he's a head coach head somewhere? Coach, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. He, you know, he will be a head coach in, in the next four years for sure. I think getting him to say, getting him to be here is dope. Even if we have him for a year, just being able to feed off a guy like that. Um, so across the board, I mean, the momentum that has been about Texas, when Sports Center stops and they're talking about Texas football, we were five and seven last year, but the PR in the conversation is positive. 
about what you just pulled off. What other coach, because the car washes haven't started yet. Media days haven't started yet and all that stuff. That's coming. And we'll eventually see coaches every single day on ESPN until the season starts. But for that to happen in June, show me – I'm sorry. I mean, Billy Napier ain't out here like that. Brian Kelly ain't out here like that. I don't see anybody else stopping Sports Center to talk about what they just pulled off in recruiting. That's my case for Steve. I have to agree. And I think it makes it all the more special coming off of the type of season that we had last year going five and seven. I mean, losing to Kansas. Coming off of the years of disappointment that Texas has had, the 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 area that the program is in right now i think obviously these jobs aren't easy but it would be a little bit easier to have that same type of offseason if you're kirby smart coming off a national championship it's a little easier to have that type of offseason if you're nick saban coming off a runner-up appearance and you were the national champion the year before but like you said that belief getting the mannings to believe in what you're selling getting quinn ewers one of the highest graded quarterback prospects of all time to come back to Texas to believe in what you're selling, getting Tashar Choice and Brennan Marion to believe in what you're selling. They brought in a top five recruiting class. NIL helped them, but NIL helped every school. So let, let's throw that out the window after a five and seven season. And now I think they're going to up the score, up the score, as we say, <laughs> and bring in a top three class this year. And as I've made the point before, on Locked On Longhorns, there is a stark difference between a top three class and a top five class, meaning that this year's class has the potential to be graded significantly higher than last year's class, which we rave about as one of the best classes Texas has brought in in a long time. So it's hard to say that Sark being able to accomplish all of this coming off of a five and seven season doesn't make that the best offseason of any head coach this year in the power five i'm gonna ask you one this is i gotta take this from my boy josh neighbors this is off the menu you know what i'm saying i'm just throwing this at you steven random question they've gotten arch manning they got ryan niblet i think he's the 75th overall recruit i think we underrated that that signing a, a little bit i as think a, he's a, gonna a, end up top 50 by the time everything yeah is. I, I i i said Darn. that with john garcia but Maybe it's because it came the same day as Trey Wisner in, in the in the orange and white game, but that's a really underrated recruitment. I don't think we talked about a lot or commitment, excuse me, in, in Ryan Niblett. I think all signs are pointing to John T. Cook. I'm not saying he's coming, but I think most of us believe that we have a really good chance, I should say, <laughs> to get John T. Cook. Um, Cedric Baxter is in play. We're hearing that David Hicks might, you know, take a visit to Texas. We're hearing that Anthony Hill is is you know still maybe locked in with Texas, might be even more now that Arch committed. Does Sark pull off a top three class this year? It's going to be tough. You still got Texas A&M, you got Ohio State, you got Georgia, you got Alabama. Is this the first time since 2019 that Texas breaks into that top three in the 2023 recruiting class? Yes. Yes, I think Sark Sark will pull it off. There's too much momentum. I think this staff is well-positioned now to capitalize on that momentum twofold. A lot of these guys, I know Hicks is one. Baxter might be another. I don't. I, I, and and some guys are wanting to get this wrapped up before their high school senior year starts. Some guys are waiting for the All American game, you know, at the end of the year. For the, a lot of guys waiting for the All American game at the end of the year, which means what they get to see the product in season. So if we just come out and do what we both think we can do. I think that actually can erase doubts, especially with all those big time defensive names you just mentioned, because for them, they're just waiting on proof of concept. Everything else is in place for Texas. It's a great school. The vibe is there. The staff is there in terms of relationships. The guys are there on offense. It's really just waiting on proof of concept for a lot of for a lot of those guys. Now, there's exceptions. I I believe Malik Muhammad is going to make his decision sooner rather than later and a couple other kids. But you know, guys that are are holding out until, you know, either National Signing Day or All-American games, that actually, to me, I think will, with how this season will go for Texas, will be advantageous for us in recruiting and solidifying a top three recruiting class. Excellent points, brother. And I forgot about Malik Muhammad, uh, Malik Muhammad excuse me, and JV and Toviano. Those are two corner recruits, the two best corners in Texas, really good corner prospects. 
uh, that could really set this class off too. So like you said, um, I think they're hovering around 18 or 19. Of course, we know it's going to be at least top five, especially with Arch Manning's commitment. Um, but I think they have the potential to really break in, in that top three this year. And uh, just with the momentum Texas has from last year's class and in this class with Arch Manning, I mean, it could get real scary in this 2023 recruiting class. Steven, this has been one of the best episodes I've done. I can't wait to go back and listen to it, man. So much good value, so much good information, so much good Longhorn talk for my brother. And before you can even ask me when he'll come back on, he'll be back on to do this again. Steven, tell them where they can find you and all your great content. So we are Fanatic Perspective. You can find us on YouTube, as John said, up, up off top. Fanatic perspective on YouTube. We covered Longhorn, you know, pretty much everything now and, and have so many great folks on. John, you're going to have to j come on and, and join one Easy. of our live shows and just Easy. wrap it up with folks. Uh, we do a lot of live show, a lot of live stream, very interactive. Uh, hopefully we'll add a call in element um, when the season starts so we can have some, some angry sports talk radio, uh, but also love the Cowboys Spurs and, and, you know, boxing as well. So a little, you know, a lot of taste for everybody, but I'm just a fan and, and very passionate about, you know, my team and what I believe and just been covering now for a couple of years and um, just very, very thrilled with the feedback we've gotten and how the platform has grown. Hit us on Twitter. You see my handle there, fan perspective. Um, and, and John, just thank you for having me, brother. I can't wait to be back on your show. And congrats to, to how quickly you're growing and rising, man. This is great, great stuff. No, thank you. I appreciate you. We'll talk about growing and rising. The numbers don't lie, man. The fanatic perspective on YouTube, 11,000 subscribers. It wouldn't have 11,000 subscribers if the content was not elite. Thank you once again for tuning into another episode of Locked On Longhorns, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hook them. And as always, peace.